À l'ordre, s'il vous plaît. Nous allons reprendre nos travaux. Bonjour, M. Rapoport. Nous allons vous demander de vous présenter et vous allez disposer d'un temps de dix minutes. Par la suite, suivra un échange avec les différents groupes parlementaires. Donc, la parole est à vous. Okay. Um... Uh, good morning and thank you for hearing me. I hope this discussion leads to a common solution. Bill 14 will pass with CAQ help, a party that will soon join the PQ and give it a majority. So the only way to stop Bill 14 is for all 1.7 million non-Quebecois to demand that Ottawa disallow Bill 14, which and disallowance was created to protect our community from the tyranny of the French-Canadian majority. I'm only here because you, the Quebecois, are trying to pass another language law. And when I say the Quebecois, I mean people who are white, Catholic, and of French-Canadian descent. It's clear that 99% of French-Canadians in Quebec support language laws and nationalist policies, and they give their consent via their votes for the PQ Liberals, CAQ, and Quebec Solidaire. It's also clear that 99% of the... Uh, non-Quebecois people support and consent to language laws via their votes for the Liberals and the CAQ. In the last election, Robert Libman and William Johnson publicly endorsed the CAQ, and many leaders from the, quote, Anglo community supported the Liberals as well. The Gazette, CBC, CJD all editorially support Bill 101 and language laws and their impact on our community, which is negative. Hence, Jack Jedwa, the good friend and apologist for Bill 101 and Quebec nationalism, can say what he does, and Julius Gray, a major supporter of Bill 101, who says that it should not be touched, uh, agrees with, with new liberal leader Pierre uh, Philippe Cuillard that it's balanced and necessary. So, since the English community is full of, I would say, quislings who support the language laws, and the community votes for them repeatedly, you will not re and you will not repeal Bill 101 or any language law which has become the third rail of Quebec politics, there's only one solution. The creation of a language law free zone that would extend from the Ontario border to the most of the eastern townships, western Laurentians, two-thirds of Montreal, half of Laval, and a fair amount of the North Shore and South Shore. Thus, we would be left alone and free of language laws and your tyranny. Uh, you would benefit because businesses and people would come back to, Mon to the greater Montreal region, and you could look, collect taxes from an improved economy and the creation of new jobs. People and businesses would feel comfortable to return and invest in this province. Your zone would be more French, your schools would be full of people wanting to learn French, and the, qual and the quality of French instruction would improve. You can be as racist and xenophobic as you desire, and I'm not the only one saying that about language laws and their effect and their intent. Um, so, for us, we are left alone in peace. Our community will start to rebound and attain its old numbers. We will grow yet again. Our school, our public school enrollment will grow again within a few years, reach the 250,000 mark that it had in 1973-74. Our, com our various community institutions will be secure, be they hospitals, public service groups, churches, synagogues, associations, etc. The benefits for all are a de facto end to language politics, division, and a need for a, quote, social or language peace. The Quebecois would have their own area, and that would be 97% French or more. Um, the two groups would be separated by a virtual wall and no longer feel the need to worry about nationalism and upsetting each other. Some history. The original plan for confederation was to divide the province of Canada into three parts, Ontario, Quebec, and the central Canada, from Kingston to Montreal. Uh, this was proposed by John Sanfield MacDonald, the first Premier of Ontario. Uh, if this had been adopted, there would be no need for Bill 101 and Bill 14, because we wouldn't be worried about it, you wouldn't be worried about it, we'd be left alone. Christopher Duncan, an English MP from the Eastern Townships, along with three other MPs voted against Confederation because he rightly predicted that the tyranny of the French-Canadian majority would pass legislation against our community and institutions. This allowance was supposed to be, was supposed to protect us from Bills 22, 101 and 178 and, and 14. Neither Trudeau nor Mulroney used it, and most likely Harper will not defend us either. 
So basically, Bill 14 will go ahead. Uh, we do not need the PQ and CAQ to hate and despise our community, as the Liberals under Barassa, Charest, and Criard do an excellent job of it already via their support for 101, 178, and Bills 103 and 104 that stole an additional 500 students per year from our schools. Um, the Liberals see Bill 101 as necessary and balanced. They have never repealed existing language laws and only strengthened them to demonstrate their nationalist credentials. Thus, the English community is definitely guilty of supporting its own demise, although it has been abandoned by Ottawa, the Liberal Party, and its own leaders. Um, and they agree to uh, language laws and nationalist policies. Sadly, it's divided, weak, and ineffectual, and many will vote liberal rather than stand up for their rights. And um, basically, um, the community will only get its rights and freedoms back if we stand up and fight back appropriately and effectively. So in conclusion, let's agree to live together in peace and harmony. Give us our language law free zone and you will still collect our taxes, enjoy economic growth, and free us from the tyranny of the French Canadian majority. Your supporters include the Victor Goldblums, Bill Tetley's, Julius Gray's, Alex Patterson's, Anne Lagasse Dowson, Dowson's, Yolan James, Kathleen Wiles, Jeff Kelly's, Lawrence Bergman's, and many others. You can have them. It's no loss to our community. They support laws which are creating our demise. 97% of the MNAs who vote in favor of language laws are, alas, French Canadian. Uh, and the, you also bring them in. So it is clearly your program, your attack on our community. You support the notion of collective rights and legislation to protect and promote the French language by violating individual rights and freedoms. And believe that it is the duty of all Quebecers to protect and promote the French language and culture. Um, and so, Free us from that and free yourselves from us, and all will be better off. You do not need to act like the people of France when they persecuted the Huguenots in the 17th century or Otto von Bismarck's government in the 1870s when he persecuted the German Catholic community and attacked his own. The Huguenots were driven away from France. France ceased to industrialize when it should have. It suffered grievous disasters in warfare. And you know, you're driving our community out of Quebec. It's very sad. My family's been here since 1905. I'm fifth generation. I love this province. The people are great, except when it comes to language, something goes very wrong. So I'd like to thank you for the time you've given me to present, and I definitely look forward to your questions, unless I have a minute or two to still speak. Merci beaucoup. Nous allons débuter les échanges. Je vais maintenant du côté du gouvernement. Madame la ministre, la parole est à vous. Alors, merci, monsieur, de vous être présenté à cette commission parlementaire. Euh, je, je, je salue toujours le fait que des citoyens euh, décident de venir euh, nous parler de leurs préoccupations. Nous n'aurons pas d'autres commentaires. Je vous remercie. Allez-y, monsieur, oui. Well, you know, it's very important. Our community has been here since the 1700s. We love Quebec. We've helped build this province. If we're equal citizens, then why is it that you need language laws? If we're all Quebecois, why do you have access to English schools provisions that are based on what it, what, how you determine someone to be white in South Africa under apartheid and how you determined who was a Jew during uh, the Nazi era. It was based on who your parents were and, and a blood test. If, if we're all citizens and we're all equal, there is no need for people to be denied access to a publicly funded institution that everyone pays for. Why is it, and please explain to me that, why people should not be allowed to attend English public schools if that's the wishes of their parents. And the Minister of Justice in Quebec, under the PQ, said, we believe in freedom of choice when it comes to, comes to marriage and whether one wants to live, uh, whether one wants two people to just live together without being married or have a marriage. So if you believe in freedom of choice for couples to live together without being married, how come you cannot agree to allowing 
parents, be they French Canadian, be they English, be they immigrant, because the law is not, access to English schools is not based on your language, it's based on who your parents are. So why can't people be free to choose? I'd like to know, I'd like, I think myself and many others in the community would like to know that. Merci. Nous allons maintenant du côté de l'opposition officielle. Monsieur le député de La Fontaine, vous avez la parole. Merci beaucoup, Madame la, la Présidente. First of all, Mr. Rappaport, thank you very much for your time, for um, having taken the time to, uh, to draft uh, your brief and to present it to us uh, this uh, morning. I think on many issues we don't share, we're not sharing the same, uh, same approach, the same analysis, but uh, that being said, I think that it's, uh, it's important to hear all the voices, obviously. It's about democracy, it's about uh, this process, and it's important to see uh, what are the differences and where everyone stands. That being said, vous me permettrez, uh, Monsieur Rapoport, de, de, de réaffirmer le fait que la loi 101 est une loi importante qui, au fil des années, a su maturer. Au fil des années, nous a permis d'atteindre nos objectifs, je crois, collectifs, qui étaient l'épanouissement du français. Et en ce sens-là, euh, la loi 101 nous permet aujourd'hui d'avoir un équilibre, ce que nous appelons un équilibre linguistique. Et euh, dans la mesure où nous ne sommes pas dans l'état de nature, dans la mesure où Rousseau nous a enseigné qu'il est important d'avoir de, des lois qui balisent euh, de façon raisonnable et équilibrée le, le comportement de tout un chacun, euh, sans être trop philosophique, mais c'est peut-être vos commentaires sur les Huguenots et Bismarck qui m'auront inspiré Rousseau. Euh, je crois qu'il est important de reconnaître cet objectif collectif-là qui est important et également de faire en sorte que l'on puisse atteindre cet objectif-là, mais en respectant toujours un équilibre entre, d'une part, l'objectif collectif d'épanouissement du français et, d'autre part, le respect des libertés individuelles. Ou, je devrais le, le, le dire plus précisément, le fait de ne pas trop empiéter dans les libertés individuelles de manière raisonnée et équilibrée. Alors, c'était le, le commentaire que m'inspirait votre présentation et votre mémoire. Merci beaucoup. And you feel the need that our presence is a threat to you. What is wrong with giving us a zone where there are no language laws? We would flourish. You get the tax dollars. We're left alone. You don't have to oppress us. You don't have to look bad in the rest of the country and the rest of the world. And you have your area, which is primarily French Canadian. I don't understand why you feel the need to, to attack us. Jean-François Lisée recently spoke and said that he, want, he wants English-speaking Quebecers and non-Quebecois to feel like they want to be in. We actually are in. We've been here for a long time. We just want to be left alone and treated equally. But can you please explain why we can't have our particular area where we'd be free to flourish and just enjoy individual rights? Because you said you believe in individual rights, but you don't because you're using the law to tell people that they cannot access publicly funded institutions for the education of their children. Merci, Monsieur Rapoport. Et commentaire, Madame la, pré la Présidente. Alors, euh, là-dessus, je vous remercie beaucoup, Monsieur Rapoport. Et euh, sans vouloir me répéter, c'est en termes d'équilibre qu'il faut aborder, je crois, la, la question. Alors, je vous remercie, ça complète. Euh, et je vais laisser ma collègue euh, vous poser des questions. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Nous allons maintenant euh, du côté de, du deuxième groupe d'opposition. Madame la députée de Montarville, vous avez la parole. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Merci, Monsieur. Merci pour votre mémoire que j'ai lue, que je trouve euh, audacieux. Il y a des choses surprenantes là-dedans, votre zone, euh, free law. Mais j'aimerais savoir comment, selon vous, puisque pour nous, il faut protéger la langue française, mais il faut aussi protéger la minorité anglophone. Alors, comment faire, selon vous, pour protéger la langue française dans ce, dans ce Québec où il y a davantage d'immigration et où il faut toujours, toujours... Euh, faire en sorte de s'appliquer euh, pour, pour, pour faire en sorte que la langue française, justement, puisse survivre dans cette marée anglophone qui est autour de nous. Comment faire pour protéger la langue française, puisque tout autour de vous, c'est une marée anglophone, alors vous ne perdrez pas votre anglais, mais nous, comment faire pour nous protéger? Par cet argument que vous êtes dans un pays d'anglais, les Dutch sont dans un pays de beaucoup de langues en Europe. Ils parlent encore le Dutch, les Suédois parlent encore le Suédois. Why should immigrants be forced to join your community? I don't understand that. 
um, they're coming to Canada. But more importantly, is there any reason why the French Canadian population is not having as many children as it used to in the past? Why would you want people to join your community against their will when you could bring people in who do want to join your community? I mean, my, my father spoke Yiddish. My grandparents spoke Yiddish. I do not. My father did not teach it to us. It's our loss. Um, it was done via the family without any government interference. You have an opportunity to improve the French language, to make sure that you'll, it has a future. But in actual fact, it's not really threatened, and the only languages threatened in Quebec are the First Nations languages. But this argument that you're in a sea of English, okay, let's say I'll buy that. Give us our area, which is southwest Quebec, and you have the rest of the province. Uh, we, don't, we won't have to speak to each other except at work. Or in, well, no, well, I don't like language laws. I, don't like, I believe that in the primacy of individual rights protecting all. I've got the feeling you believe in collective rights and imposing uh, a desire and a need to protect and, and strengthen the French language on everyone. In, in the English-speaking world, that's not the way we do things. We fought very hard and very long for individual rights and freedoms in the 17th century. That's the basis of Western democracy. And the fight for that was key, which, which means that the rights we have in Quebec, aside from language laws, are very important. Habeas corpus goes back to the Magna Carta in 1215. And I would say that the right of the individual to be protected from the state is far stronger in the British tradition than in the French tradition, where until recently you were presumed guilty and had to prove yourself innocent. Whereas in the English tradition, you were innocent until proven guilty, and our rights and freedoms go back to 1215 in the Magna Carta. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Rapoport. C'est maintenant tout le temps qui nous est alloué. Maintenant, nous devons suspendre nos travaux jusqu'après les affaires courantes. Donc, bon après-midi à tous et à toutes.